Youssef, great to see you back here in the UK, fresh from last month's victory, of course, in Barcelona. But you're back here on the big stage in another great fight. The Barcelona experience, although you took that fight on relative short notice, we know you love to fight and be active. How did you enjoy the whole week looking back now? You know, looking back at, at, at the whole experience and the event and everything, it's another thing to take off the list. You know, I boxed in Gibraltar. You know, I can say I boxed abroad in, in Barcelona now and not just any fight. I was in a, it was in a massive war out there and I got to please the fans. And that's what I love doing, pleasing the fans and enjoying myself and having a war. So, you know, like I said, it's another tick done. And on to the next one, which is Saturday night, you know, another war for the people. Let's just talk about that fight with Vicente Rodriguez, because on paper, you know, when you were looking for an opponent, you thought it might be a bit of a tick over fight for a fight of the Castaneda type that we've mm. got this weekend. But as you say, it turned into be a bit more of a tick over, you know, in terms of pedigree, boxed Adrian Broner back in 2011, I believe, for the world title. And in terms of that level of opponent, in terms of the fight he gave you as a team and yourself individually, you felt that was the step up you needed. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing like learning from hard fights like that. You know, I mean, we can all knock out a bunch of tomato cans and have the padded record. And, you know, it might be 20 wins, 20 knockouts. But in reality, how many of those wins am I really going to learn from if it's not people like that guy that's going to come and push me to the limit and try to win? So, you know, I'm, I'm, I was happy with the fight. Um, I could have done a bit better, being honest. But I'm happy with it. I'm happy that he pushed me to the limit. And I took a lot from the fight and I learned from the fight. And it's just going to make me a better fighter. And, you know, it'll, it'll be there for the people to see on Saturday. Talking about those improvements, I think... Your coach, Xavier Miller, felt you could have won the fight a bit cleaner. You know, maybe you talk about the word war there. Maybe you did get a little bit too involved with Vicente Rodriguez. Is that one of the biggest lessons you've taken from that fight, especially when you're looking to step through the levels, just being that bit defensively compact and that bit more defensively tighter? Is that maybe the biggest lesson you took from that? Yeah, I've always been someone that's, that's loved to get dragged into a war. You know, I love being in wars and from an amateur going into the professionals, and especially inspiring, and I always want to get in there and have a fight a bit like Alan. You know, the savage, you know, a bit like him. So, but definitely I've, I have learned from the fight. I've listened to my coaches and, you know, if, if there's an easy night's work, I might as well take it instead of going the hard route and having a war all the time. Now, when we spoke in the immediacy after that victory in Barcelona, we, of course, looked ahead to October 30th. You were very hopeful of being a part of Dillian's undercard. Still on the same show, of course, but mm -hmm. Dillian White, unfortunately, unfortunately, forced out through injury. As a team, someone who's been out in Portugal, can you give us your version of what's happened and just how disappointed Dillian is as well? Oh, of course, he's very disappointed. You know, he's a man that loves to fight, just like me, just like Alan. You know, the team are, are full of people that just love to fight. So, looking back, if you look back at his track record, he never pulls out. You know, no matter what, he gets in the ring and he fights. So, for him to pull out is definitely something serious. But you know, with those, you know, doors will open for him eventually. You know, I mean, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. So, you know, hopefully, he does get his world title shot soon, sooner rather than later. You've been out there in Portugal for, for bits of this camp as well, the duration, most of this camp, I believe. It looks like a cool setup, and we know you all have a great bond within the group as well. I, I asked Alan this question because, you know, he's always very vocal about the impact Dillian's had on his life and certainly his boxing career. How important is the experience for you in camp with all the guys and especially the impact that Dillian White has had on your life and career? How, how important has his role been? You know what? They say, you know, in life, they say you are what you, you become what you're around. And... Being around the likes of Alan Babich, Dillian White, um, a world-class training team, it can only benefit me. I'm um, learning every day, whether it be from a physio perspective, a strength conditioning perspective, a boxing perspective. I'm around guys that have a, a lot more experience than me. So me out there, I'm just being a sponge and picking up anything I can from anyone and adding it to my arsenal and making my game better. So it's the best thing for me in my career. One thing you've probably taken from Dylan is any anyone can get it. That's his <laughs> mantra, as if he, what he goes by. Jorge Castaneda, just talk to us about this fight when it was first put to you by Dylan, by Eddie and the guys, and, and what some of your first thoughts were as well. I loved it. I loved the fight. You know, you know, like I said earlier, we can all knock out a bunch of tomato cans, but you know, Jorge's a game opponent. You know, like we saw in his last fight, he went out and beat a top American prospect. Um, I'm not Offa Jones. I believe I'm a lot better than Offa Jones. So he's got a a big bag full of tricks to handle on Saturday. But, you know, it's a fight I love. He's a guy that comes to fight. I'm a guy that comes to fight. He's definitely someone I'm not going to have to chase around the ring and look for. So we can go toe to toe on Saturday and have a war and please the fans and please ourselves. He took that fight with Ofer on short notice and mm. up at £135 as well. And I think what made it even more impressive is if he beat Ofer Jones, as you say, a top prospect, coming off a two-year layoff as mm. well. That in itself is impressive. Were you impressed with his performance that night? 
definitely it just shows he's someone that's always in the gym and is always ready to go at when, when the question is put to him. But you know, you know, like I said, I'm not Offer Jones. When you look at Offer Jones, really and truly is, is, is a novice pro. He's 5 0 one with one drill, he's coming off a draw. And let's be real, if you're not stopping them kind of guys, you know, there's, there's questions to be raised there. But, you know, we'll find it on Saturday when, when I get my hands on him. And that WBC international silver title on the line as well, for you to be winning your, your first professional title, I mean, that you boxed for the English title before, of course, in that draw, but to win and fight for your first professional title, especially a green and gold belt, how mm. much is that factoring into your motivation for this fight? It's a lot, it's a lot. You know, growing up watching boxing, you always see Floyd Mayweather with the WBC belt or, you know, the Klitschko's and it's sort of, the, I think it's the best looking belt in the game. So for me to get a, a step closer to winning it, it's a lot more motivation than anyone. You know, I can just take the belt and parade it around my area where I'm from and, and hopefully one day win the proper WBC title. And the materialistic side of it is great in terms of parading <laughs> it, but it's also, you know, a stamp for the rankings. You know, mm. you've had a good year. This would really cement mm. a great 2021 for you, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. I get a world ranking. I mean, to even think at the beginning of the year, you know, I'd be ending the year with a world ranking. I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have even thought of it, but, you know, to, to now have the possibility to, to end on a world ranking is, is the best thing ever. You know, I can be in the top 20 in the world or wherever it's going to be. And, you know, next year can push towards being number one. When you do visualise this fight in your mind on Saturday, now I'm sure you're always running it through in your mind. Positive mm. visual visualisation is so important when you're heading into a big night like this. But... How do you want to win this fight, Yusuf? And how do you believe you will beat Jorge Castaneda? Do you know what? I, want, I just want it to be spectacular. I want it to be spectacular. Um, you know, the main event is gone from the show. So the show's up for, gra up for grabbing, up for grabs. I want to go out there, win in spectacular fashion and, and steal the show and steal the night. Whether it's a stoppage, whether it's a points win, I just want to steal the show. And Eddie has said this is definitely the sleeper fight on the card. It's the fight he's arguably the most excited about um, when he's talked in recent interviews. Do you believe it will catch fire in stages? And just tell us why you think the fans should tune in on Saturday. Do you know what? They say styles make fights. You know, styles make fights. You know, Castaneda's a guy that's going to be right there in front of me. I'm a guy that's going to be right there in front of him and we're going to go for it. You know, the fans like to see action, you know, it going both ways at times in the fight. And that's exactly what they're going to get. They're going to get war on Saturday. Yusuf, so we're looking forward to it, man. We can't wait. Yeah, we wish you the very best of luck. <laughs> Thank you. Top man.